In today's video, we're going to go over two different weather balloon problems that we are going to be solving using buoyancy. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Please support our channel, subscribe, click the notifications bell so that you don't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. In addition, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials which you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. Whether you're looking for notes, practice, and example problems with all the solutions, everything is there at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. And this is the first problem that we're going to work on. We want to know how big must a helium-filled weather balloon be to lift up three things. That is, one is the payload, which has a mass of 85 kilograms. One is the empty balloon, which has a mass of 3.5 kilograms. And the other is just the helium that is inside the balloon. Now, when I say here how big, we're going to figure out the radius and we're going to assume that this is a spherical balloon. Now, there's two other things you need to know. That is the density of the air, which is 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter, and the density of helium, which is 0 0.179 kilograms per meter cubed. Now, we're going to be solving this with buoyancy and the buoyant force. So the first thing we need to do is draw the free body diagram that shows all the forces that are acting on the balloon. Now, the first force that we're going to draw acts upwards, and that is the buoyant force. The next force is the payload, the force from the payload, and that acts in the negative direction down. Then there's the force from the balloon, small b, as opposed to capital B. And then there is the force from the weight of the helium. Now we're going to add up all of those forces, and then we can solve those for the buoyant force. And the buoyant force in that case would be the minimum force needed to lift up all uh, three of those objects, the balloon, the payload, and the helium. So we write down, we sum the forces is equal to zero. That means that we can put in that the buoyant force, which acts in the positive direction, minus the force from the payload, minus the force from the balloon, minus the force from the helium, is going to be equal to zero. Now to solve this problem, we're going to add uh, the force from the payload, the balloon, and the helium, and move those to the other side of the equation. And we get that the buoyant force, the force needed to lift those things up, at a minimum has to be equal to the force from the payload, which acts down, the force from the balloon, which acts down, and the force from the helium, which also acts down, and the buoyant force has to lift and push all of those things up. Now, we can in insert for those terms the equations that we know. We know that the buoyant force is the density of the air times the volume of the balloon, the displaced air, times g, and that's going to be equal to uh, from Newton's second law, the mass of the payload times g, plus the mass of the balloon times g, because that's second, Newton's second law, the force, and then also the mass of the helium times g. You can see we have a g in all of these, the acceleration due to gravity, so we can cancel that term out, and then we're simply left with the density of air times the volume is equal to the mass of the payload, the mass of the balloon, and the mass of the helium. We'll take that to our next slide here. And we know all of those things, or are trying to find all of those things, which we're going to find the volume, but we don't know the mass of the helium. We know the mass of the payload, 85. We know the mass of the balloon, 3.5. We know the density of the air, and we're going to solve for the volume. So in order to do that, because we don't know the mass of the helium, we can substitute in there because we know that the dense, from the density equation, that the density is the mass divided by the volume, that the mass is going to be equal to the density of the helium, which we know, times the volume. And the volume of the helium is going to be equal to the volume of the balloon over here. So those two volume terms will be the same. So now you can see we have density air times volume is equal to the mass of the payload, the mass of the balloon. And I simply substituted in for the mass of the helium, the density of the helium times the volume. That's from the density equation, the density of the mass, divided by the volume. Now, this volume of the helium and this is the volume of the balloon. Well, those two volumes are equal to each other. So we want to solve for V. So I'm going to move this term, subtract this term from both sides, and then I'm also going to factor the volume out. So you see that we get, when we do that, that the volume times the density of the air minus, because we subtracted this term, minus the density of the helium is equal to 
the mass of the payload plus the mass of the balloon. Now we simply have to solve for the volume by dividing both sides by this term. And you see that we get the volume is going to be equal to the mass of the payload plus the mass of the balloon divided by the density of air minus the density of helium. We know all of these terms, so we just substitute in, and we get that 85 plus 3.5 divided by 1.29 minus 0 0.79 kilograms per meter cubed, and that is just about 80 cubic meters. So that's the volume. Now, 80 cubic meters, how big is 80 cubic meters? Most people have a hard time picturing what 80 cubic meters is. I said we can do that. What we're going to do is find the, uh, the radius of the balloon or how big the balloon is across. And we can do that, and then we'll have a little bit better, I think, understanding of how big the balloon is. We know the volume is 80 meters cubed, and that's a sphere. The equation for the volume of the sphere is 4 pi, excuse me, 4 pi, 4 thirds pi, times the radius cubed, because it's a three-dimensional object. If we solve for r, the radius, not the diameter, but the radius, we get it's the cubed root of three times the volume divided by four pi. We know the volume is 80. We know everything else, so we just plug that in, and we get that the radius of the balloon is just about 2.67 meters. Okay, so that means that the size of the balloon needed to lift those objects is about two and a half meters, or, or five meters all the way across. All right, so there you go. That is the answer to example number one. Now, in the example number two, we're going to do something similar. We have a spherical filled helium balloon. Now we're given the radius and we want to know how much mass could this balloon lift. So we have a spherical balloon, it's filled with helium, and we're given the radius 6.5 meters. And the balloon and the structure of the balloon, the other supporting material for the balloon, has a mass of five, 825 kilograms. And we want to know how much mass could this balloon lift. Now, we're basically going to start off with the same general idea. We know the density of the air. We know the density of the helium. We have the free body diagram. We're going to sum up the forces. We sum up the forces the same way because the buoyant force acts up and these three act down. And we can solve for the buoyant force. That's the minimum buoyant force needed to lift those three objects. And we can substitute in, again, the equations that we know. The buoyant force and the second law forces, the second law equation. Solve for G. And we get the same equation. And now we bring that to the next slide again. Now, in this case, we want to solve for now the mass. How much mass could the balloon lift? Okay, and that is going to be the mass of the payload. So we want to solve for the mass of the payload. And in this case, we're going to substitute, subtract both of these terms. But once again, we don't know the mass of the helium. So we're going to substitute in our density equation again, that the mass of the helium, excuse me, the density of the helium times the volume, and that's equal to this term. So I just substitute that in there. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, substitute, I'm going to subtract... These two terms from both sides, get these two terms here, because we're solving for the mass of the payload. And then I'm going to factor out the volume of the um, balloon. And I get that that is the mass of the payload, payload is equal to the volume, once again, times the density of the air minus the density of the helium, and in this case, also minus the density, excuse me, the mass of the balloon. Okay, now I can plug the terms in that we know. We know that the volume, now I'm just going to put this in right here. The volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. That's the volume of the sphere, as we said in the previous example. Okay, and then we have the density of air minus the density of helium. And we put all of that in there. And we have, and we have to subtract the 825. And we get that the mass of the payload, okay, could be equal to 1,278 minus 825. So this term right here is 1,278 kilograms. We have to subtract out the mass of the balloon, 825, and that means the mass of the payload could be 453 kilograms. So a spherical balloon that has this radius, okay, can lift this whole amount, 1,278, 
but we have to subtract off the part that's already part of the balloon and then it could lift an additional 453 kilograms and that would be the mass of the payload. Okay, so there you go. That is the answer for example number two. So there we go. We did two excellent examples for buoyancy and the weather balloon. First, we found how big the balloon must be to lift a certain payload. And then we found out, if we know the size, how much payload could that balloon lift. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following. Subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.